Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for July 27th, 2020. Glad that you're with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you call us to a new way of life in your realm of grace and peace. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let your will be done in our lives and in this world that you love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Psalm 57 and 145, Joshua 24, verses 16 through 33, Romans 16, 1 through 16, Matthew 27, 24 through 31. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul take re takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. Selah. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions. They greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows. Their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit for my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. Selah. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Psalm 145 I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. 
The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. From Joshua 24, verses 16 through 33, we've skipped ahead to the end of Joshua's life. and He is addressing the people. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statues and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, See, this stone shall be a witness against us. For it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us, therefore it shall be a witness against you, if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. Being one hundred and ten years old, they buried him in his own inheritance at Timnath Sarah which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and had known all the work that the Lord did for Israel. The bones of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the portion of ground that Jacob had bought from the children of Hamar, the father of Shechem for 100 pieces of money. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. Eleazar, son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Gibeah, the town of his son Phinehas, which had been given to him in the hill country of Ephraim. Our second reading is Romans chapter 16, 1 through 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church at Sincrea, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints, and help her in whatever she may require from you, for she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, the work who work with me in Christ Jesus and who risked their necks for my life to whom not only I give thanks but also the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epinatus, 
who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are permanent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stichus. Greet Apelles, who is approved by Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my relative Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Timphinia and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, a mother to me also. Greet Asencretus, Phlegion, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. And Matthew 27, verses 24 through 31. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his hand, and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in Joshua, in our Old Testament lesson, we skip ahead. Um, the, the Israelites have kind of won a basic victory of the area. They've more or less taken over the land. Um, they've not completely rid it of the other people that are there, um, but they are there. And they divvy up all of the land, and each of them has their sort of ancestral land, and there's much talk about who gets where and all that sort of stuff. And, and there are specific towns set apart for the Levites, priestly cities where people can go if, if there's a problem and, and all, all sorts of different things like that. And now Joseph, Joshua comes before the people and gives them the law again tells them once again, this is, this is what you are called to be and to do as the people of God. Um, this is how you're supposed to act. This is how you're supposed to love one another. And he warns them very sternly. Um, you know, you have the choice, right? You have the choice right now to worship the God who has brought you into this land, who has given you miraculous victories over the people here, you, whom you have defeated. Um, you, you can serve the Lord your God, and if you do, it will be good for you. Or you can serve the gods of the people that you are defeating. You could serve the gods of, of stone and wood and gold, and it will not go so well for you. Choose this day who you will serve, and this is where that famous um, quote comes from. Choose this day who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people say, yes, yeah, we're definitely going to serve the Lord. And he goes, no, you're not. You can't serve the Lord. The Lord is holy. 
The Lord is good. And frankly, I've been hanging out with you for a long time, and you are not. You're not going to live up to God's standards. And yet God will continue to choose you. And they say, yeah, no, no, we're going to follow all of the law. And he says, no, you're not. But you are witness against yourself. You will remember here, he sets up the stone there in this place. You will remember the time when I told you all the law and that you said, on our own lives, we will serve the Lord. We will do all the things that God asks us. And one day you'll look at the stone and realize that you had not done it. That's the human condition. That's how it works. And all the people go. They go from their place. Joshua dies. Eleazar, or uh, whatever the next priest, dies. And then people do well all the days of the, of the life of, of Joshua, all the days of the elders who were around when he was around. But things don't go so well. I'm not sure where the lectionary goes next, but if we go continue on in the Deuteronomic histories, we'll see they didn't do as well. But here it is. It's, it's uh, you know, we are sinners in the hands of an angry God, says uh, Martin Luther. The human condition is that we want to, as Paul says, we want to serve God. We know the things that we're supposed to do. We just don't always do it. We try to serve God, but we don't always succeed. And this is where we are. This is why Jesus came to us and died for us so that we could, so he would do what we could not do. He would serve God as man so that we as human beings could serve God, that we might be filled with the spirit of Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, mini sermon over. <laughs> Romans, this is the, the fin finishing up, the summing up of Romans chapter 16. And you know, just some interesting things I love about this list that Paul is greeting. First of all, the very first person and several others are women, um, which is a really interesting thing, especially because Paul gets a, a pretty bad rap for not liking women very much. He has some strong things to say, specifically in Corinth, and there's lots of good reasons for that um, about women. But here he's praising and lifting up women who are not only um, in ministry, but they're in leadership. So there's the first one who is has been supporting him financially. Um, she has a church in her house. Um, she is therefore at least partially the leader of that household. He greets uh, Priscilla and Aquila. It's interesting that Priscilla is the woman and Aquila is her husband. He, he lists her first, which is telling. Um, he notes several other women. He also notes several men who are not Hebrew at all. They, are, they have Roman names. Um, there's even a Herodian name, um, potentially from the house of Herod, um, sort of the, this, this Jewish aristocracy. He's got this gr huge group of all these people that he's greeting as, a, um, as these leaders in the early church. And it's a wonderful image of this sort of egalitarian nature of of how God works and how, especially the early church, and um, you know, hopefully we're relearning those lessons, um, that God empowers all sorts of different kinds of leaders and all sorts of different people that God calls to this ministry, to leadership, to all sorts of different things. And those who are in leadership, part of the, the job is to raise up and to support leaders, to, um, to listen to those leaders who might be leading or speaking from the margins, who might be not the people that you're expecting. For the first century, that would be people who are not Jewish and who are women. Um, and Paul lifts these folks up. Um, for us, it's, it's people of color. It is um, well, frankly, it's women sometimes, depending on our denominational um, context and, and just with sort of the innate um, 
prejudices that we have? Um, how do we lift up those people? It's, it's people who are young. It is people who are old. It's people who, you know, have personalities that we maybe don't mesh with all the time. Um, God calls leaders from all sorts of different kinds of people and uses all of our gifts and abilities together. Remember that building of the altar and fitting stones together. Um, then we have in Matthew, Pilate washing his hands. Uh, he tries to, to swerve, right? He tries to make a different choice for the people. Um, he lifts up before them. He says, you know, do you want this mass murderer, this instigator, or do you want this guy who has nothing against him other than the, the priest don't like him all that much? And they choose Jesus. And he says, fine, I will wash my hands of it. Um, does that absolve him completely? No, not really. But there it is. And you know, there's this same sort of motif that we hear here in, um, in Joshua as well. They say, you know, let his blood be on us. Like, we're going to take all the responsibility. We can serve the Lord. Um, now, Pilate doesn't specifically say to them the same thing that jo Joshua does, you know, no, you can't serve the Lord. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. Um, he just kind of silently, and Matthew just sort of silently says, just leaves it there. Okay, this is what we're doing. Um, and Jesus is arrested and put this, this scarlet robe is put on his, is around him and this crown of thorns. In fact, I have one to say. It's pretty torn up. But this is a crown of thorns that someone made for me from some similar sort of, those are not fun spikes. And a lot of them have broken off because this is several years old. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea. Um, the, the whole idea is that it's a mockery. He claims to be the king of the Jews. He claims to be um, Messiah, the anointed one. Um, and they make a mockery of that right before they kill him. So there we go. Some heavy stuff this morning. Um, let's go ahead and gather together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially we thank you for the ministry of word and sacrament. Those who serve and care for others. The affection of our friends. Your call to love and serve one another. The presence and power of your spirit. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially we pray for the church in the Asian Pacific region. Endangered species of animals and plants. Those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow. Those who suffer mental anguish.
all who seek the way and truth of Christ. People of God, for what else do we pray? Lord God, we lift up Amy and her husband, father. We lift up Greg. We lift up all who are um, recovering from COVID-19. Those who are succumbing to it. Lord God, be with all of those families struggling through that. Through all those who are indirectly affected by COVID-19, which really is all of us. For our nation. For our world. Holy God, your love is higher than the heavens and your grace is wider than the sea. Awaken our hearts to the joy of your presence and open our lips to sing your praise. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join us next time for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button if you have not done so already. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information, for information about services and what we're doing right now. Uh, You can give your prayer requests through that as well or through these videos. Thank you so much for joining me today. Our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our readings came from the Reform Common Lectionary, Daily Lectionary readings using the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.